Right, hello everybody and welcome to Between Two Fans. The man is back. Uh, it is the back. OG uh, duo. We had a stand-in last week. Uh, you know, at the moment, contract negotiations continue behind the scenes with regards <laughs> to the long-term future of Between Two Fans. Fabrizio um, Romano speculating as, yeah. as we speak. He's tweeting, you know, almost here we go along the way. I, I yeah. hear it was the... the a most watched episode on YouTube um, since this podcast induction. So, you know, that's a hell of a pre season training camp for for Mr. Addy de Block. Yeah. So, no, listen to the thing. And, and yeah, so, I mean, Dan, it's called the moment, you know, the contract renewal negotiations are definitely uh, uh, having had a relook. So, we'll, we'll have to wait and see if we're going to continue with Dan or if we might be looking to, to make that loan deal a permanent one. But uh, for now, cool. we will deal with, uh, with what we've got. And uh, the man looks uh, a little bit tanned. Uh, looks like he actually saw the sun, um, and uh, looks like Bok fever is officially hit. So first of all, Dan, how are you? How was Italy? Italy, um, Italy was great until I heard I might have, um, you know, I'm half out of a job now after coming <laughs> back. Um, you know, so so a holiday might might, might have um, hurt me in that way, but you no know, good sun, which we lack in the UK. Um, good sea, good food. Um, but happy to be back, Stevie. Very, very excited. Oh my word, do we have a lot to catch up on? And yes, as you can see, Bok Fever's hit. I can't believe you there wearing your grey. Um, I think it's testament to Bok season being in the country where I am as a person. Correct, person's country and you've got where the confirmation you are. you are going to the game as well. So I shall be there. Yeah, that's nice, nice, nice to be down this week. But uh, Dan, let's 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 get into this, shall we? Because we've got a lot to get through in 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 this and this. After what we said was going to be a bit of a slow week last week or the week before, then uh, we've now got everything ramping up with the Euros yeah, that started on Friday. It. <laughs> we, we we've got internationals coming up. We've got Ireland squads being announced, Bok teams being oh. announced, Wales teams being oh. announced. Uh, cricket into the oh. Super Eight tomorrow. You know, stop! I like it stuff out here. So let's go through the predictions um, because you did have a proxy last week. I did, I did, and, I did. Uh, you know, let's 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 see how the proxy has fared. So, we had three games, and for those who don't know, we do a running tally first to fifteen. Basically, is the current uh, competition. Steve currently leading ten points to nine. Uh, the loser, by the time we get to fifteen, we'll have to do an episode in a rival jersey, so like a Bulls jersey for me, or like an Arsenal jersey. <laughs> Dan will have to be in like United jersey, or like Oof. a. A Lions jersey, or you know, or maybe, or like maybe like an England rugby jersey or something. You oh. know. Um, let's try and find no. like, basically the worst possible thing to potentially wear um, and, and, and they yeah. have to do an episode in that so uh, the race is on it is firmly on now in terms of the predictions last week uh, we had the Bulls versus Leinster Steve saying Leinster by 15 Alice to the block clutching up here for Dan going with the impossible Bulls by 8 getting the, the dub it was Bulls by 5 in the end um, so it imagine was picking, imagine picking too many for the Bulls to win by you know, yeah. th that's what I call bloody confidence. What a guy. <laughs> yeah, you obviously just said that we didn't. Fan? <laughs> I think he is, actually, to be fair. Okay, well, there, there it is. Heart. Yeah. With, always with the heart, not the head. Bro. This is how we do predictions on the side of the table. Correct. Then Munster versus Glasgow ended up 10 points, 17. Both myself and Ali went with uh, uh, Munster wins. I said Munster by 5. Ali went Munster by 12. So technically, um, and I will claim this because Dan has had a couple of sketchy wins via yeah. this, uh, okay, uh, okay. this 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 rule on technicalities. So technically, Points I difference. do uh, I win that. So it's one one one. Um, and then Spain versus Croatia. Uh, Steve back in Croatia one nil. As to going two one Spain. Croatia were absolutely awful. Yeah, um, no. The under sixties rocked up. Yeah, no, it was so so frustrating to see that that just the lack of. And everybody's not sort of thinking about you know Spain a potential favor and stuff like that and. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Spanish side's good, but I don't think it's as not, not the Spanish not, side. Not favourites, but people yeah. are impressed now. People yeah, are but impressed. I just, you know, you do, and again, you still look at, you know, the, that, that, that Croatian side. There's still good players in it, but just didn't really come in. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Obviously, um, we had to have some interesting Euros results. England, for example, on Sunday, getting a victory, but very underwhelming performance for somebody who's supposed to be favourites. Uh, France having to graft last night to get their victory. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that, that there. So technically, Dan, you have been given the win. It is all square at 10-10. We are equal. This is my first time, hey? We are yeah. all, all square since since um, the inception um, of this segment of the show. Uh, I'm glad I said to 15 and not to 10 because jeepers. Steve, your momentum is a funny thing. Those who haven't been listening for a long time, the score was 8-2, I believe. 
um, at its worst. So, I mean, A2, and now it's been a reverse A2 in, in the other direction. So we all equal at 10-10, and momentum's a funny thing, Stevie, and I have to say I back my chances. Um, you know, we, 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 we team heart the side. There are too many analytics going on in, in the brain over there. Yeah, well, you know, to be honest, now that we're moving into the more sort of neutral things uh, moving forward, I think this is where it's going to get interesting. You know, we've got no Premier True. League, for example, so True. nothing to worry about between Liverpool, United, Affinity, uh, <laughs> even the URC, our team's out. You know, we're always both going to back the, back the box. So, yeah, it's now yeah. going to make, now going to get interesting. But let's talk about some ruggers, Dan, because we had some, we had an incredible last weekend. Um, two upsets. And whilst the Bulls yeah. were, you know, the home side. And, you know, I got a lot of flack for calling it an upset um, and saying that it's, you know, it was Mission Impossible. And people were like, oh, but this is the Bulls. Look at their history. Look at their the results they've had. And I was like, I'm not saying it's an, it's one of the best ups games ever for the Bulls. But this Bulls side, like, this is not the Bulls side of Brian Abana, Bucky's boy to Victor Matfield, Donnie Rousseau, yeah. Free de Prier, You know, Free. like, it's not that Bulls side. This is the Bulls side that was missing two out of their four box. Um, had one coming back from injury and one that went off with injury and early captain, in the first half. And, and the captain, you know. So this is a very inexperienced spool side on a sort of journey on the way up. But now, actually, against, against, against potentially against, being URC <laughs> champions against yeah, yeah. Leinster, like, who, regardless of not having won the trophies, three back, I mean, three back to back to back to back, uh, you know, European finals, for example. Um, they, they are. Half the island team. Yeah, like, it's, they're, they're, it's they're the real deal. They, they, yeah. they, they put they put teams to bed for fun, home or away. It doesn't matter when they're full strength. Leinster only lose to the best of the best when they're full strength. That's yeah. just a full stop. You can put next to that because how many games have they lost this season at full strength? Two, one to to lose in the final, one two balls in the final. That's yeah. it. You know what I mean? When they go at a hammer and tong, they win. So mm. of course, it, it, and when they win, they win a pretty. I mean, look, look how easily they dispatched Lever Shell when they when they had yeah. to. They had a lot. They had, they had yeah. some old scars there. It was like, oh, might be a close game. They said not a chance. Went into that game and and hammered the current European champions. Yeah. So the, the quality is there. I, I I mean, Stevie, I think it goes in two different directions, and I think this game was won and lost emotionally. Um, in that, I think there's a massive emotional hangover that Leinster now have and and it's not about necessarily their quality on the pitch because that isn't being questioned here I think it's just how much can three finals back to back to back as you mentioned weigh on you and trophy the season off trophy the seasons with world-class squad like they have versus the Bulls who go in with nothing to lose um and it, and at home with their with their fans behind them you know they just were play like a team possessed right yeah and I think Leinster paid the price for the rotation, didn't they? You know, that's the African trip, losing to the Lions and mm. the, the, mm. the Stormers, finishing in, in, in third. That was the difference. Because um, I know it's been done before, but I do kind of say that's kind of more sort of the COVID times. But I don't think the Bulls go overseas to the RDS. Or they, actually, I don't even think they're in the RDS. I think they'll be in, they would have been in the Aviva um, or Coke Park because the RDS is being uh, renovated. I don't think Bulls go over there and do that. You know, but I think Leinster at home put them away. Much less likely, much less yeah. likely. Um, but yeah, so maybe I mean, a word of warning that to to Leinster in terms of well, next season you got to you can't sacrifice that that number one position. Yeah, yeah, and and, you, and you're also looking at um, I mean you speak about sacrifice, Stevie, and, and what Leinster you know they sacrificed for the betterment of their Champions Cup ended up not not winning that you know in a very close game, of course, going mm. to extra time. But the Bulls, on the other hand, sacrificing the Champions Cup semi-final sending a B team over losing that um for the betterment of the urc season earning yeah. them a second place spot getting a home semi-final and as we kind of both agreed one of the main reasons that they were able to win much more difficult away from home so you know people um scrutinized people you know were highly critical of yep. jake white but it's it's worked exactly how he played it out like a yeah. chess not checkers you know what i mean this is what he wanted he wanted to be win the urc and he thought he had more chance of doing that and now he has an opportunity to do that on saturday at home yeah he basically said it was quite it was quite simple if you want if we were to win the the european champion you have to go away to a toulouse away to an a leinster 
away to a Northampton and he said like even if they beat Northampton they would have then had to go home to to play against you know a, a Leinster in or, or to lose in the, in the final over in in Europe and he basically said we're not going to win the Champions Cup you know we can't we don't have the resources but we can contend for the URC so yeah I mean put all the eggs in the basket and uh, they will host Glasgow Warriors on Saturday and they will go into that game as firm favorites so difficult to argue um the results but let's also talk about Munster versus Glasgow Iranian champions. The, it is a curse, by the way. There is not a single team that has finished first in the URC log that has gone on yeah. to win the tournament. Yeah. Um, no, so it's huge. It's, it's, and we're going to have a new champion as well. Neither Bulls nor Glasgow Warriors have won the URC. Bulls have been in a final. Which is so good for the health of the competition. Yes. Right? To have like, three different winners that, in three different seasons is really cool. At, and, I mean, obviously, you know, Stormers were the likely ones to go back to back last season. And yeah. Munster potentially this season, but I mean, you're talking about. Uh, to be fair, over the all, over the three seasons, it, it has been those have been the dominant figures. Mm-hmm. If you're talking about four teams, Leinster, Munster, Stormers, Bulls. Now, but it's great, you know. This, for all we know, the trophy could be going to Scotland this year, mm. um, and not from South Africa. And now you're talking. We 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 spoke about it a couple of weeks back. How it was amazing that we had a team from Wales, Italy, Scotland, South Africa, and Ireland in the top eight. So yeah. you're talking about diversifying your talent pool. And I think that's what makes this competition very different to, to others in that you have so many um, that possible um, competitors. Yeah, no, I think I, I 100% agree. Uh, and I, I, and Glasgow has been my, my second URC team. It was very cool to see them get, get over Even the this ride. weekend? Uh, this yeah, this weekend uh, was hundred percent against Munster, hundred percent. I was all Glasgow War. Oh, for this coming weekend. This coming weekend. Yeah, yeah, this one, this one does does uh, does 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 tug on the harsh strings a bit because I, I said I, they they played the first URC game and I remember watching it was a Friday night. I sat at home and I watched it and I was like, yo, this team's cool. Like this is my team. And uh, now they're in the final against the Bulls, so it's going to be the yeah. the the, the, patri- the patriotism versus versus the team that I've been really rooting for for the last few years. So it's going to be it's going to be a tricky also, one for me. You got a South African coach, Franco Smith, South African, South African captain, um, Carl Stein, yeah, um, Simon Boy. Jersey in there as well. I think he's injured at the moment, yeah. so not playing. But you know, a couple of South Africans in the mix, as they usually are with, in and amongst the Scottish. So um, you know, it's 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 not all um, it's not all anti South Africa if you're supporting the Glasgow Warriors, no. which yeah. I'm still on the fence about. Right? <laughs> um, I'm also I, I I'm I'm it's like. Usually in rugby, as South African fans, everything's just geared toward the box. But yeah. now it's like my footballing side comes in where it's like the noisy neighbor. You know what I mean? Yeah, correct. Now it's, like, now it's the bulls, and particularly for you, you know, in, in Gauteng, you, they're correct. just across the across road the there. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not hearing too many of, of the blow buller, um in my ear at work um, as much as I'm sure you are on a day to day basis. So. Mm. Um, I mean, either way, um, it's going to be a, a crack of a final. But um, mm. you have to say Bulls are going to be favourites. But I think that might just favour Glasgow as it did in the semi final. Yeah. No, I think they'll enjoy being underdogs. But I think you're going to have potentially fifty thousand Bulls fans who are going to be there at three o'clock, drinking brandy, watching the box, and then filtering into Loftus. <laughs> um, if there was ever going to be a cauldron and, 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 a, and a stadium where you don't want to play, it's probably again going, going to be on Saturday because it's going to be an absolutely mental vibe to have a box game just before, and then you're literally going to go from the box game into Loftus and watch that game. Um, it's sold out. Uh, I don't know what the current update is. There was an update today from the the Bulls side. They did sell four thousand um, tickets in the first hour. Okay. Um, uh, so, I mean, it'll, it'll be at least it'll be at least eighty um, percent capacity. I mean, that yeah, 30, I reckon we'll see. I reckon we'll see at least forty thousand people in there. Yeah, um, that would be yeah. my my guess. Um, uh, but speaking of the day, we've got Springbok rugby, Dan. And oh. uh, Rassi, so I'm not wearing this hat for no reason. Yeah, Um Rassi has sprung the surprises with yeah. a very interesting no. side that has been named um, so yeah, every, 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 every Rusty squad I don't think it's, we've there's always that one like oh okay squad. you know there's always that one selection that no one can really call um, but let's go through the side quickly. So I'll go through it. Uh, 1 through to 15. It is Oxen Chair, Malcolm Marks, Vincent Koch, Evan Etzbeth, Franco Mastered, Quacker Smith, Peter Jeff Toy as captain, Evan Ruiz, 
And then the back line is Faf de Klerk, Jordan Hendricks, uh, Makazola Mapimpi, Andre Esterhazen, Jesse Creel, Edvil van der Merwe, Apalele Fassi. The bench is Bongi Imanambi, Ince Tukov, France Malherba, Salman Murat, Ben Jason Dixon, Grant Williams, Sasha feinberg Gomezulu, and Damien Ade Lindy. The four uncapped players are Jordan Hendricks, uh, Edvil van der Merwe, Ben Jason Dixon, Sasha feinberg Gomezulu. So one to de- Ebion waiting for the forwards, three in the back line. Dan, what stands out for you in that squad? I mean, there's only there's only one person we can start with, right? And it's it's the you know well documented and discussed position within the Springboks over the last couple of years at number ten, and it's Jordan Hendricks. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about someone um, who is playing second fiddle to the guy who was just named today UFC Player of the Year. In, so he started. Um, he only started fifty five percent of the games for Lions this season. So he's playing half the games because essentially starting off the games um, to be fair. Sanel Nahamba has taken that number ten jersey for Lions and made it his own. Um, especially because the Lions, um, you know, have had such um, depth at scrum that they could have him there. I think Jordan mm. was out injured in the beginning when he when he slotted in, and he's just be- been. Unbelievable, complete box office from Nahamba. Um, not obviously getting into this squad is Nahamba, but we're here to speak about Hendrix here. I think the big thing that everyone's speaking about is his size, Stevie, mm. and his size, how big he has become, and the conditioning that he has gone through to get to the stage. And I don't think his performances toward the Lions, he wasn't necessarily dropped as a result of bad performances, you couldn't just you just couldn't get back in as a result of Nahamba. It was just yeah, but, you, he just had that he, he had the unfortunate you know thing of having three slightly off games, and then they gave Nahamba the keys, and Nahamba said Chizux, and he yeah, bolted, gone. and he just I'm he gone. just became undroppable. You know the the, the the dynamic he added to the team, you couldn't you couldn't move him. Mm. And uh, I mean, mm. he played basically almost every game this. He played twenty two games, he played over a thousand minutes to Jordan Hendricks. So somebody was saying, you know, he hasn't played a lot of rugby. You're wrong. He has played a lot of rugby. It just seems like he hasn't because he's been coming off yeah. off the bench and he's been playing yeah. second fiddle. But I really like the fact, as you mentioned, the fact that he's bulked up because I said two years ago when he came through at 20 years old, I mean, he was playing at 19, by the way, which in a yeah. backline player is very rare. One thing that's Kicking always stood about... Kicking 70 meters. Up, yeah, but what is, is one thing that's always stood out for me, more than just like his kicking stuff, is his physicality. He's a big boy and he knows yeah. how to tackle. He's a fantastic defender. And that's why when he came through, I said, Bok fly mm. off. Mm, that mm. is that is he's the mold of a box fly half he loves yeah, defense yeah. he can't take the ball to i mean he's been playing 12 recently a couple of times to try and get him and nahamba into the into the team so i don't think i'm massively surprised that the box coaches rate him because i think he fits the mold but a lot of people are very surprised that he skipped ahead of my Leibok. he skipped ahead of sia masuku and yeah skipped ahead of sasha femme Zulu as well yeah and, and i think to be honest he was even a bit of a question mark when he was added to the squad, right? Yeah. He wasn't a, he wasn't a sure in. He was probably the most unlikely backline player to be added into mm. that because of his minutes and because of those start, only starting 55% of the games for the Lions this season. And what this tells us, Stevie, I mean, you're talking about a team, the third best team in South Africa, um, and the second choice fly half is now your starting 10 in a test match. I mean, what does that say about the depth that we have? Not mm. to mention Pilo Gumede, who could be in at um, in Pretoria right now, training for a URC final. He's not good enough to make the starting twenty-three for the Bulls, yet he's in a box camp. This yeah, is I, I'm very confused about what's happening with that Pilo Gumede situation. I mean, how does he go from having the season he's having? To having Marcel Kutsia being injured and still playing like an Azam car ahead of an Impilo Gamedi, it's a it's a very it's a weird. Yeah. I, I don't I mean, know I think, what's I going on there. I think that's just a Jake White nod of approval to the, probably the experience of Nizam Car. To be fair, um, or I mean, the, the, the Bulls just have so many uh, loose trio options. Um, but the point being is that the, the Springbok depth is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, you mentioned. I mean, I'm gutted not to be watching Sia Masuko on the weekend. I'm not going to lie, just because it felt like the, his rise and his trajectory. Mm. You know, leading it up to this first test at Twickenham would have just been a beautiful story. But I actually think that he is more likely to get game time in the Island series than than Hendricks or than Gomez Zulu. I will completely disagree with that. Okay, talk to me. Uh, I was saying today on the show, this Bok management, can you name a player who has gone from like nothing to something and gone straight into this Bok team and, and like skipped ahead of people? 
like the only person well, I can the- sort of think is, is Grant Williams. And the, the only reason I say that, as I said, it's amazing how loyal this particular like management group is in terms of people who have been in the system. They give them the chance first. To so be the clear, fact I'm, that- I'm not saying he's going to jump Money Leibok or Andre Pollard. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. What, what I'm saying is, I I think in that big game, if Rusty is picking between, um, if he's picking between Siam Suku and Jordan Henderson, I think he's picking Siam Suku. But then I think I'm, he would be playing Siam Suku this weekend. Because why wouldn't you? Why would you give them the? Why wouldn't you give them exposure if you do intend on using him for 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 Ireland? Stevie, if I were to try and understand Rusty, I would be a millionaire. <laughs> but I don't, but I, I have faith. And that's yeah, what like he's crazy, bought by winning back to like World Cups. Yeah, yeah no, no it, you can't, you can't, you can't get into There's a plan somewhere in there. There's a plan somewhere in there. Um, but, I mean, there are a lot of talking points. Also, the comeback, Stevie. We, you know, people who, who were, um, you know, either out because of um, injury, Salman Murat, Malcolm Marks making their, their mm. respective comebacks. Um, and then I mean, Fassi, actual, back of the squad. Yeah, Church of Fussy Weekend Special is back, and you can't say it's not earned um, as well. He had a great season with the Sharks. Um, Evan Rose, the madly contested number eight position, well, what Big will what particularly for him. with um, the performance of Cameron Hanacom over this last weekend. So this is an opportunity for him to wear the green and gold and put in a put in a big shift. So I think it will go a long way for him give it, having this extra week. Mm. Um, and then of course Mkunu, um, you know, joining. Uh, what otherwise is just a typically very very um strong and and world cup winning um forward pack so you know really really exciting obviously ngome zulu now if he steps on the field on saturday england can wish their luck goodbye mm-hmm. no chance of him getting him but there another player who only ever really started getting minutes after damon Willems had got his injury so you know the, again the depth of the spring box is just ludicrous yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, uh, what I really enjoy is the fact that fly half was such a big problem position, and now we've got so many options there, for example, and the, and the box, yeah. and you can see they've gone with Asiya Masuka, who's 26, 27 years old, he's got, he could have another two World Cups in him, but I mean, we're talking about Jordan Hendricks, uh, Stash Femme Gomez, Jordan Hendricks being the older one at 22, turning 23, with Femme Gomez turning 22, they've got three World Cups left in them, potentially, you know, they've got yeah. three more World Cup cycles, so, yeah. This is an opportunity for them to become part of the system and just start not like, just. I mean, they could be very nonchalantly, I mean, you know, play four mm, to five games mm. the next few seasons. Or next thing you know, they'll be 28, 28, 9 years old, ready to be starting and, and almost have, you know, 40, 50 games for the box. And they're ready to you go. Also, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and you're also looking at a number number 10 position where, you, where you know, Hendricks is looking at his left and his right. He's got Faf over 50 caps, Andre yeah. Essays, and then Jesse Creel on the other side. So. Oh, uh, just a wealth of experience for him mm. to be around. Obviously, you know, there's Edwell and, um, you know, Apalele, who are the inexperienced heads um, at the back and on the wing. But it's the classic breeding of young players. Even Kunu is, I think, 24 years old, you know. Yeah, but and he's coming with from, and from the best and of France. the best. You know, yeah. he'll, he'll be taking over from Ox probably one of these days. So it's it's just, it's always the most exciting the year after world cup and we were yeah, deprived correct. of this during covid because of covid um <laughs> to see you know yeah. what this would look like we just had to go and play a lion series without even like anyone yeah. really knew i don't think there was a single single day be in that series yeah i think maybe. i think um maybe jasper visa jasper visa, yeah, was the jasper visa he's about the only one that was playing for the in the british Irish, for the box the british Irish lines there's a couple in the uh that georgia game for example i think it was like fast yeah. made his debut there. Fassi, yeah um and uh, i think roscoe speckman made his debut a couple yeah. of debuts back there but uh, uh, something i wanted to talk about we're talking about in terms of re- reward for just absolute hard graft relentless effort ben jason dixon yeah. uh, what a oh, season what a he's guy. had and just what a guy. he's been around the he's been around the setup um you know he's been he's been playing for the stormers but bench player always kind of the first player to get dropped or in and around start i mean for example mm-hmm. you go look at his 22 and 22 season and he played just six games all off the bench 2023 for example he played uh 21 games uh 48 starting and uh then you look at this season for example where all of a sudden he's a 70 percent starter for the stormers yeah. and been absolutely immense you could you, you could not want to make comparisons, but there's there's a Peter Stifter toy esque ness about him, you know, yeah. in terms of the work rate, the way he goes around, the fence of masterclass, the physicality, the reading that he makes, and just the hard graft. Yeah, no, and again, super super happy for him. Done it the the hard way of forcing away into a 
the a storm is, uh, or regular storm is start uh, through good performances and you know that that leads to an opportunity in a quite a young Springbok squad obviously because the the bulls are off you know you'd look at you know there, there are a ton of people that that are lining up in in his type of position or low for example is just like knocking on that Springbok door so Springbok material for three years now and has barely got three caps um yeah. but you know now he has an opportunity and you spoke about loyalty once they wear the Springbok shirt that mean that the, your um your what's it the the type of game that you have and the performance that you put on in a box shirt means more than anything you've done at club level. Yeah, you're right. And these and these coaches will reward you. You know they they'll back you. You could have a de- dreadful club season or a very average club season, but if you've been been, been doing it for the box, they'll say I'm very happy to continue backing you. Um, you Absolutely. Know, they, they've shown Absolutely. that loyalty in the past, and sometimes very very rare to the detriment. But sometimes you know that it's it's just it's it's about knowing that. You walk into a Springbok jersey and Rusty sits down and says, oh, listen, I know you've had tough six months, but you're my starting hooker. You're my starting whatever. You know, I back you. You know, I, I know what you can do. We know you can do. You've got nothing to prove here. Um, you know, go out and just play the way you can because we know you can. So I think that's the backing that these guys give them is, is second to none. Um, but Dan, something I want to talk about is the fact that uh, we obviously got our opponents this weekend uh, in yeah. Wales. So a very, very inexperienced uh, side in that even Etzebeth, um has... Um, more caps than the entire front row pack nuts yeah 190 to 118 yeah so that that shows you uh and i think if you look at that starting pack i think it's um i've, I've got the squad here i want to look at exactly i think i think it's like two players who've got all all, all those 190 caps basically um it's it's a mentally inexperienced uh um, yeah. wayne Wright has got has got a got a bunch i think he's got yeah so it's wayne Wright with 48 and yeah. uh, Garrett Thomas with 30. So that's 78, almost 80 caps <laughs> of that 118 coming from two players. Yeah. They are the yeah. only players you have. And then uh, Dewey Lake's the only other player that's with more than 10 caps. James both has yeah. got 10 caps. Uh, Dewey Lake will cap to the side. Cool to see uh, Liam Williams back in his first game since moving, making yeah, it to Japan. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. I mean, the only one, uh, he's by far the most experienced head. And, uh, mm. and from that, you know, iconic Wales team, the one that was, you know, winning Grand Slams at the Six Nations that we got used to. Um, and he's got 90 plus caps. But other than that, you really have to, you know, the other one is Wainwright, which you wouldn't even like really associate to that era. So, I mean, a completely new face of Wales as it has been. Uh, obviously, wooden spoon winners in the Six Nations. And and uh, Gatwick's come out saying it's a roll of the dice. He wants to see you you know, you're playing South Africa. Let's see. Who he puts lo- their he hand loves up. that throw to the wolves. Eh? He loves that. You know what? Go play. Like I'll throw you. I like I'm gonna put you in there. Go and go and show you're playing against the world champions. Go and mm. go and go and show me you're a test player. You know, mm. like and I think he's gonna sit there saying if you. The, the funny thing about Warren Gatlin is he'll be going and say I think he can win. You know, he's yeah, got that. Uh, he's got that mentality. He's not oh, gonna sit there and be like, see, oh, we're building, etc. Yeah. He wants to see a player that in four years' time is gonna challenge for the World Cup. Correct. And that is, and half of that is heart, particularly yeah. against a physical he, box team. Yeah, he wants to see a Mason Grady who's got eleven caps, very talented young player. Look up across to him at Jesse Crew and say, "Cool, I'm going to outplay you." Yeah, I'm going to go toe to toe with you. You won the World Cup. You were, you had you were one of the best players in the World Cup last year. I don't care. I'm going to outplay you. You know that yeah. kind of that kind of that kind of attitude. You want he, he, that's what he wants out of these players. He wants these players to say, "Bugger, I don't care who we're playing against. Mm, I, if mm, I outplay mm, my mm. respective person." Then I've done my job. Yeah. Uh, there's some nice players in this world style. I mean, I was a massive fan of Cameron Winnett when I was watching him during the Six Nations. Not a player I've watched a lot of club level, but looked so, so comfortable at international level uh, in yeah. a struggling well style. I still like Sam Costello. I know he's had his, his struggles at uh, international level, but again, he's playing behind a very inexperienced pack that yeah. hasn't had a lot of opportunity on the front foot, but I do think he's a talented geez, player. Has, there. He, has he got a tough order on his hands? I mean, if yeah. you're thinking, you know, on defense, he's going to have. Um, you know, he's going to have Andre Estes and Jesse Creel running crash balls right at him. And when he has the ball, he has Quacha, Peter Steff, and Evan Roos hunting him down. So yeah. this is this is when, you know, you got to, it's like, are you a man or a mouse? And we're going to yeah. figure that out this weekend, I think. Um, but yeah, he, he has had his um, difficulties. I remember he that, that game versus Italy um, at the Principality, the final game the, that concluded... Um, the Six Nations and, and resulted in them being the wooden spoon winners. He didn't have his best day out and you see that from fly halves when they are yeah. rattled they just they there's the no place to hide unfortunately as a fly half you can't hide you cannot hide it doesn't matter you. what you, the ball's yeah. coming to you, you have to, even if you're on the back foot 
if 50-50s, even if they're like hitting, if they're locked, then if they're hitting, you know, up and under bombs into the sky, you underneath that, you're at first receiver, you're having to sort of defend. If Evan Lewis does make a break off the back of the scrum towards you, you know, mm. you, you're hoping your flank's coming, but you're going to have to sit there and say, okay, fine, well, I'm going to have to get involved. You cannot hide as a number 10. It is the position that that is the most... Um, mm. Uh, yeah, you, you are. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, you can't, you can't get away from that. So, yeah, a bit of experience coming off the bench. Garrett Davies um, with 60, 76 caps. Uh, so, mm. so that's a nice player to bring on. But apart from that, sure. um, you know, we're talking about ten caps in the in the front row. Um, James Ratty on debut. Eddie James on debut. Mm. Jacob Beatham on debut. And Mackenzie Martin with three caps. So the the entire bench, I think, has about ninety caps, of which Garrett Davies has seventy six <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, listen, it's, it's going to be a tall order um, for them, but um, why not now? You know, if, yeah. you, if you're one of these Welsh players, this is your opportunity. And this season, beginning with the, uh, probably their, or their touring Australia, which is also, you know, difficult as much as Australia have had their problems, but this is where you put your hand up. And if yeah. you want to guarantee yourself, you know, you give yourself runway if you put in a man of the match performance mm. this weekend. So, um I'm really excited. Obviously, as mentioned, I'm going to be there in the flesh. Two o'clock kickoff, followed by the Barbarians versus Fiji, which is just the most box office game you could even dream of of watching. Um, so I, my Saturday couldn't be um, scripted better. Yeah, and a nice Barbarian side as well. You're going to watch Sam Whitelock's final outing. Uh, he will catch the side. Uh, but True. Dan, an island squad has been named. For, I mean, I don't have a lot of time to speak about it, but we will. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll pick it apart a bit more next week when we've got a bit more time and we're going into the Iron States. But uh, two very big absentees: no Jamison Gibson Park, mm. no Jack Conan. The one I want to focus on is no Jamison Gibson Park. I I, I watched him, you know, the, in Six Nations. The most and I watched important him player. Yeah, I agree. I, th- I think. Hands and if it wasn't for Anton Dupont being an absolute freak of nature, I I would have no issue saying Jamison Gibson Park so is could very well be the best rugby player in the world the way he's yeah, playing he, in the last couple of years. He's just insane. He, he's top five, no doubt, uh, uh, rugby players in the world. And the only reason he's not is because he's against the, you know, the Lionel Messi of rugby. Unfortunately, yeah. sorry, that's not Finn Russell. Um, but, you know, it's, I genuinely think he is so, the, the way he can vary the speed of that Irish attack, which has become so unrelenting as a result of his skill and his ability to distribute and put it on the toe and just be in that right space, everything you want from a scrum off, um, he just makes that Irish side tick. So I, I think that is absolutely massive um, in in the series. And you know, Springboks, do, you know, they they have their own injury problems. Um, you know, glaring ones of what's um, it? Currently, Orange, for example right now and 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 you know captain Sia Kulisi, well we actually really don't know who's going to be the captain going forward but the, we have our own problems but i don't think there's as much of a reliance on one single player in our in the springbok camp as there is to jamie gibson park for that island team so i'm really ex- um, interested to see who it's going to be um filling his boots yeah it's well craig casey Connor murray um named in the squad two two players which i mean i love watching craig casey i think he's a very very cool and fun squad yeah. we'll have to watch. And I was very impressed with him last year uh, in that team. Munster that final. But obviously, then you've got the experience of uh, Conor Murray. There are three uncapped players in the squad, by the way, in the form of Jamie Osborne and Sam Pendergast from Leinster. And then Ulster's Cormac is a Chuku, uh, gets his, uh, his first senior call up, uh, the 24 year old. Um, so, very keen to see if I'll, I'll be interested to see if, if we see any of those get game time. I'll be very surprised. Um, Unless they're gonna, unless they're gonna back Sam Brittigas to to yeah. debut, well, I mean, he's the other uh, fly off in the in the in the squad ready for for Jack Crowley. Unless you're gonna go for like a, a Kieran Ford, you can also potentially play there. Yeah. Um, of but it, it's, I mean, it's a good squad. It's it is still got lots of lots of uh, of quality. Um, Peter Marnie talked about whether you know there was talks about whether he was gonna potentially go um, and was his you know island career. He had he, he himself said after the Six Nations, we we'll have to wait and see. Um, and you will capture the side. I'll be. Uh, I reckon this could very well be a swan song. Um, I think he might come out here for the two match tour and then call it quits. It'll be very um, Peter Armani. Just, he, he, I mean, he's Mr. Shit House of rugby, right? Correct. He wants to. He, the last thing he wants to do on in a rugby, on a rugby pitch is win in South Africa. So yeah. I think, 
And if he doesn't, then he might just delay the, the retirement yeah, they, they, a little bit. One longer. of those things, you know, if he beats the FQ retire, if he doesn't, you'll see him in the next World Cup. <laughs> if 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 they won the Grand Slam, he would have retired by now, but they didn't, and so now he's irritated and he must win the next one. He didn't win the URC, so he's gonna have to he's gonna have to win something. We might yeah, as you said, we might see him at the next World Cup. And then he's, um, and then he's this, gonna announce the retirement at the end of the season and get called out to the British and Irish Lions. Yeah, or and to captain it probably yeah. as well. <laughs> um, but Stephen, before we move on to looking at England's performance at the Euros, let's quickly touch on England versus Japan this weekend. Eddie Jones going up against, obviously, um, being the former coach of um, the English side. So a lot um, of you know history in this battle in Tokyo. It's going to be an early kickoff, um, 6.50 a.m. my time, um, you know, 2.50 local in Japan. But mm. um, very... Very interesting, and what really actually is looking like quite a strong English lineup um, mm. with about a thousand vice captains. Yeah, four vice captains. Can we just talk about this? What is why? What is the point? Because <laughs> within those four vice captains, there is the real vice captain who will become the captain when the captain leaves the field. So when James George goes off, who's the captain? That's the vice captain. And, and I mean, are you really telling yeah. me that Joe Marlon needs to it's get like a vice captain? It just never yeah, works. It doesn't it work. Never works. Will, you have to have one who's just the designated captain. This whole crap about. Yeah, I mean, look, you could be like the boxers. Just call you know. it your internal leadership group. It's 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 like Dwayne. Everyone just knew Dwayne was like a player coach. You know yeah. what I mean? When he was at the box, no one questioned it. You don't need to put a label on it. It's an understood thing. Or if it's or it's internal, why are you forcing it by making it external, England? This, yeah. it's uh, are you fragile? Or what's the vibe? Yeah, you know, are these people saying, not feeling they're getting enough? Yeah, enough credit. Or... Exactly. You know, that's what I'm saying. Does Joe Marlon, and Henry Slade, and the likes need to be told you're important too, guys? Like I, you can be. You also a vice captain. It's just. Yeah. It's not for me. So it's Jamie George is captain. Jamie George is captain. Um, and as you mentioned, Marla, Slade, um, Itoje, and Ben Earl, correct? Yeah, correct. Um, and and all good players understood and essentially what all they're saying. Well, I mean, Henry Slade wasn't even at the World Cup. I was going to say a nod to you, a part of the future. Henry Slade and Marla may or may not make the next World Cup. You know, you, you'll you have faith that, you know, Itoje will and Ben Earl will make the next World Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, Earl particularly probably if if they're wanting to put someone as their as their you know next captain jamie george isn't that young um no. he also you know there might be question marks about his next world cup so um it's it's just confusing Anyways, it is very confusing um, and unnecessarily confusing so um yeah both you lost the plot um it would be very <laughs> funny if eddie goes and beats beats england um and, and you know he's been it. planning this game for weeks he, well, Eddie, months, Eddie, was, sorry. Eddie was planning. Months. Eddie was planning this game whilst Australia was busy being beaten by <laughs> yeah. Wales at the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mid game. Mid game. Okay. He's like, you know, oh, what? they're going. They're touring. Okay. England are touring Japan. He's, that's where. Yeah, I'm he's fit on the England game. He's watching the highlights, and they're like, Eddie, what are you doing? He's like, oh, yo, just do it, dude. Like, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. England game next year to win with Japan. Do you mind? Yeah. No, absolutely. Stevie, let's let's move on from the rugby because the yeah. listeners of the pub listen to other things other than rugby, and let's go on straight to the Euros, where it's got off to an absolute flyer. And and I must start off by saying I do think it's the best international tournament regarding mm. atmosphere because you just you take the proximity of Europe and the the passion of their fans. Mix that into one tournament over a couple of weeks, and it is just epic. I mean, it's yeah. like an FA Cup final where it's split down the middle of like of, red of fans, versus fans. blue yeah. at every single game, thousands upon thousands. It is just, it's insane. I, I love the Euros just because you, the limbs when goals are scored are unbelievable. And yeah. I'm actually going to start off where people wouldn't have guessed it, but I'm going to start off with that Romania game versus Ukraine. I mean, 3-0, 3-0 um, Romania beating Ukraine and just those fans going absolutely um, Mental. nutty. But yeah. le- le- we, we can still talk about um, some of the bigger ones as well. Obviously, Germany getting a massive opening um, win on the first night versus Yeah, Scotland. probably early favourites um, with, with the way they went about favorite. it. I felt very German in their performance. Nothing special, nothing flashy, metronomic, Nachelsmann's system. 
Um, mm. Good players, but not you know not these sort of next the star quality that they used to have. If we go back to sort of ten years ago, but it yeah. was easy, wasn't it, for them against Scotland? And I know Scotland aren't one of the best sides out there. Scotland, but I mean, they were decent, still decent players in there. But Germany yeah. just just made it look very very comfortable. Yeah, no, they're, they're, it felt like it was at a bit of a canter. Um, you know, you can probably look at a couple goalkeeping errors, but it was actually just dominance, right? Obviously, getting a red card, you know, three down with a red card at half time. Jeez, just, you know, just hold back here, boys. And they got one back, what they thought was a consolation goal, only to then concede again in like the 90 something minutes. Um, yeah. But other big ones, obviously, we've already mentioned Spain. You know, 3-0, no one's really known what to think of the Spanish team. It's been a bit of a ship out at sea without a rudder for the last couple of years. Mm. No one really knowing what to expect from them. But a dominant performance of Aro Morata, of all people, is their captain, um, scoring a goal and starting up top. Defending champions Italy getting um, coming back from behind after um, versus Albania after Albania scored the fastest ever goal in Euro's history, um, winning that game 2-1, so good start to them. Netherlands also coming back from behind. Um, I mean, Vote Weghorst just becomes the prime CR7 when it becomes to crush, um, international United football legend. time. United legend. <laughs> United legend. It's a pity he wasn't wearing an orange shirt. Or you guys didn't have an orange away shirt at least while he was playing Correct. for United. Yeah. Um, and then obviously one nil wins for England versus Serbia and a one nil win for France versus Austria which are the two favourites for the tournament getting off to a slow start but a win nonetheless Stevie yeah. um, let, let's start with the, the, the England one or England and France Sh- should they be disappointed? I think France probably less so because I thought that they overall probably played better um, England I wouldn't say lucky because yeah, Serbia had some chances, but I think, you know, weren't very accurate. But I, I just think England continue Serbia under South... Serbia were good. Serbia were no, good. No, they were good. They were good, but I think England dominated so much the first 20, 25 minutes that they could have been 2-3-0 up. And, yeah. um, you know, we talk about this golden generation of England talent. And, and my issue, and I said this in my review I mean, isn't articles, that every generation, right? <laughs> well, to be fair, I look back gold. at the 2010 World Cup squad, I think, yeah. in 2014s, but I think this... Yeah, 2010 to 24, 15, 16, we can, yeah. you know... There was a bit of a whoop, Andy but now Car- Andy Carroll era, yeah. The, the Andy Carroll, era, the Rob Green, yeah. When everyone was getting caps, and you're sitting there going, "Surely these guys are not like playing for England stuff." <laughs> but um, my biggest at the moment is that just it's Gareth Southgate is told how many amazing attacking players he has that he then feels he has to try and include them everywhere, and they just look so unbalanced. You know, they had absolutely no threat on the left hand side with Phil Foden basically just playing in the midfield. Yeah. Trent being moved to the midfield, also very absent, um, and I just think you know they just. They, for all that they keep trying to put all these all these attacking t- players in, Harry Kane had seven touches in that first half. You've got the best striker in the world up front for you, and you've got yeah. seven touches. I mean, you you actually it's getting to a point where you have to start questioning Harry Kane's ability to in an England shirt, and and that's say, saying that that he you know he's the record goal scorer, but yeah. it's a, it, but it's a, it's his record in big competitions, and it doesn't look pretty. You know, you look back at the at two World Cups ago. You know, everyone looks back at that moment where he could have squared it to Sterling, doesn't. You know, goes in his own, misses. Misses a penalty versus France, gets knocked out of the World Cup. You know, he goes to a final with England, hasn't scored when it counts the most. And you wouldn't say that about him in terms of, you know, typically with club, you know, he's scoring goals for fun. So I think it's a, it's, I think he'll be feeling a little bit of pressure now um, yeah. for that. And I, I think I think he'd be very frustrated because I think at you know, club level, you know, Bayern Munich play around getting the ball and getting him opportunities. And I just looked at that England side and Saka was about the only attacking outlet they had on that right-hand side. And that's where the goal came. Uh, yeah. And even Jared Bowen, you know, he put on a genuine right wing and he created a chance. First touch he had. I just think Southgate is getting it so so wrong. You know, it just just I don't I know you want to include all these ball players and these creative players, but I, I actually watched the game on Sunday and and I said that they were missing a a Marcus Rashford type of player in terms of someone who's going to look up and actually take. You would on. though, you would. <laughs> well, for, you talk, you you look at that game and think, oh, you know what, Phil Foden really had like that was that was the perfect left wing yeah. game. It just you know, they, but I just felt they just didn't have anyone willing. That's why Sack I thought was so impressive because he was he played, line. yeah he. Went to cut in behind. He, he was looking to take on defenders. He got involved. Whereas the rest of the time, yeah. they just passed the ball around the midfield, and there was just no final product. And I just feel that they 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 they're just not direct enough. They've got so much talent there to find, you know, players like Cade and and get stuck into the right positions and have mm. a Jude Bellingham at the you know at the top of the box where he want. But Jude Bellingham was touching the ball. 
I think he touched the ball like 120 times across the game, but yet he scored the goal. Wasn't getting into sort of the positions that he would like to be, you know, that he was at Real Madrid. I just feel at the moment Salke doesn't know what his base team is, um, and it's it's reflecting the performance. Defensively, they were relatively solid. Um, obviously, a big absentee in Harry Maguire, so Mark Guy, mm. okay, he's got a big performance ahead of him. Um, and he played well, to be fair. You, yeah, he did. You, did he stood you up? Gotta, you got to give him props to him and, and John Stones. I, I, I think... I do think the Man City model of almost having four central defenders, which, I mean, Trippier doesn't typically play a central defender, but he, he's not he's not bombing up the wing by any means, no. and neither is Kyle Walker, and I think that suits them very well. I actually quite like their team on paper. I just don't think they've ever necessarily played together and know, know how to. Um, and, and I think it's... Saka does well to keep with, but then you're talking about Foden, who's really given a lot more license at City to kind of play where he wants to, where he needs to be possibly a bit more dedicated to his left wing and, and stretching the defence so that the likes of Kane Bellingham have a bit more space in the middle. But, I, I mean, it, listen, international tournaments and pro possibly the same conversation we're going to get into for the Cricket World Cup, it's just about wins, right? You know, they've yeah. got no, the exactly. job done. So, so it was, I mean, at the end of the day, they got the result they needed. So that'll be the main yeah. thing from them. But I just think that this, you know, it just it felt it looked like a game that was kind of like mm, this is set up to this performance. You kind of look and you think mm, this, this 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 is England heartbreak written all over it in terms of a great squad that just doesn't yeah. seem to be. A one one you would have said that was deserved. Yes, you would have, exactly. A one one would have been deserved. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, Serbia for tournament favourites, you would never you should never be thinking about a one one against Serbia at the end of the day. Yeah. Is, yeah. is the honest truth there and then I mean we can say the same for France I mean a massive you know the, the news of the day is essentially that Kylian Mbappe's nose is confirmed broken after his game yesterday uh, bit of a completely unlucky incident he goes he heads the ball and his follow through you know just connects with the, the defender's shoulder and his ner nose is looking you know scary like Quaker Smith's at the moment um, Correct. but I mean, it'll be interesting to see what he does. I imagine we'll see him in the in the ski mask, Fernando yeah. Torres esque. I always remember, or I guess um, you know, Victor Osimhen esque nowadays. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it can bring out a different beast in people. But it will be interesting to see when Kylian Mbappe comes back and and if he's tested again in this group stage. Obviously, being the French captain, um, but getting the job done. Um, he was the person to assist in what was an own goal um, for France to win two one. Um, last night, N'Golo Kante, what a time to come back to form uh, or mm. back to the international stage That's putting the thing, on that yeah. performance. I mean, the most likable person, uh, football for footballer in the whole world. Um, but the big one, Stevie, and what I didn't mention was actually the, the upset and the biggest statistical upset in Euro's history, Slovakia beating Belgium 1-0. And... Jeepers, it wasn't like Belgium tried to get a goal back because I, I think they must have had three goals ruled out. But yeah. is this just again one more disappointing tournament for Belgium? Yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing. You know, talk about a team that is so good on paper that has just never, ever delivered in tournament football. Uh, what, never they, won in the world at the side. No, but they, they had no. You, you got it. 2018 World Cup, they were very close to. I, I, had they got to the final, they lost to France, the eventual winners, only just. Only just, and they came third that competition. So give them that props. But other than that, they've been pretty sure. Weren't they, weren't they number one team in the world going into that tournament? I think it was Brazil, to be fair, actually. I think Brazil were favourites for that World Cup. Alas, that one, uh, they, they, uh, they've disappointed. The golden generation yeah. has disappointed. Um, and no Courtois, I'm actually not sure why. I mean, he just came back and you know, he's made a whole Netflix documentary about his comeback to football. And you know, now he's won the... <laughs> The, the Champions League final. I know there's a lot of history, um, let's call it, between in that Belgium squad um, and, and Courtois being being central to, to a lot of animosity um, among some of the players. But Jeepers, uh, they, they actually looked really good. I, I, I still I think they'll go through. Obviously, it's, it's a tall order now. And, you know, they, they'll be... Um, they have a, a big um, couple games ahead of them and uh, the biggest one... Um, you know they're they're lucky they have a pretty easy group in mm. you know Romania and Ukraine and the, the rest of the games. But you know all of a sudden you're looking at Romania three 0 win. It's like jeez, the knee shaker over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. As, as yeah, I think that that the Belgian squad. Yeah, it's, it's it's a bit of an enigma, isn't it? Just in terms of why they can't get it 
because I mean, there should be. I mean, yeah, you, you look at a game like that yesterday, and there should be three, four nil up, ready to be honest, um, with yeah. the with the talent they have. Uh, but this is what the Euros are for, you know. I mean, Iceland beating England all those years ago. Yeah. It's, it's, we've we've had these phenomenal um, results over the years, and um, you know, so it's cool to have that and have an upset like that early on in the tournament. Uh, really, sort of gets things going, which is which yeah. is a lot of fun. Um, but speaking of upsets, Dan, I'm going to move on to a bit of cricket here because uh, so South Africa. Topping the group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Steve, Steve, staying up all the night to watch South Africa struggle against Nepal is down there with one of my like most WTF evenings, oh. whatever in terms of live decisions. But uh, tomorrow we're playing in the Super Eight, having topped our group, and we're playing against the USA. Yeah, no, you, you couldn't have you couldn't have <laughs> predicted it, Stevie, and. As you said, this is this is why we love the big tournaments. But Jeepers has the um, the conditions of these matches had their role to play in this World Cup okay, more than anything else I can remember. You know, you're talking about you know a tournament in the rainy season of you know the West Indies and and you know even Florida for example. There's so many rained out games that have determined um, wins and losses, and never mind the drop pitches. But through it all. A home team USA have gone through and you know not that this is you know, I don't think you would have seen that on, on many people's lips at the start of the tournament so no. you have to give them credit they beat Pakistan which is obviously the the shock win um you know a couple other rained out um, ones going in their favor but um they're in it and you know this seems like just a banana peel that the, the protesters have been waiting for however Every other banana people peel in front of us, we yeah, managed to fun. not slip up against. Yeah, despite trying our best, we've, I mean, we've defended mentally. So the fact that we won all those games, and I don't think it's one where we, I mean, maybe the first game we looked pretty dominant. But apart from that, it was, it was, it's been tough out there. Bowlers have been pulling through, um, which is good to see. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, obviously, you know, whether to play a part, but England's scraping through. And I will say scraping through because, uh, you know, Australia won with two balls remaining. And had they lost the game to Scotland, Scotland played really well. Um, Scotland, the yeah, they were, they were, they were going at like 10 and over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, so they, they, that was they, a they massive result. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, so, so as a result, uh, the protests are through. We will take on England, West Indies, and the USA in the Super 8. Two wins should get us into the semi final. So actually go and get job done tomorrow. And then hopefully you Looking. can you can sneak a victory against England. And even if you lose to West Indies, it's about semi final. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm feeling massively confident as a protest fan um, because our batting has been a little bit shaky to be. To be uh, uh, nice about it but at the end of the day I was also saying you know I've, I've watched Proteus tournaments are too long to, to to care what we do in the group stage because I've watched us put 400 you know consistently through group stages um, and then follow the first for, first hurdle I've watched us be shaky through the group stage and then you know put up in a massive fight in a, in a playoff game so I don't think that what happens in the group stages makes much of a difference to, to what will happen for the Proteus in the Super 8 at the end of the day it comes down to can this team rock up can this team you know, finding that extra gear or that, that, that extra moment they have been doing and they have been doing it. So, you know, they've obviously got the ability. The question is, can they Absolutely. do it in the next three games? Absolutely. And and you mentioned moments, Stevie, and you look back at, you know, the real heartbreaks of Proteus over time and it is literally about moments. It, we, how, how often have we put ourselves in positions to win games in, in crucial moments of big games and that's where we slip up the yeah. general it's not uh, if you look back in time it's we haven't typically you know been absolutely obliterated no. in, in big games it's, it's it's been about moments so yeah, i mean even that Aussie the, final the, last year you know where we where we didn't bat well for example we brought ourselves back in the game consistently we made a game of yeah. it you know we've always managed yeah. to to find to find that that extra bit of fight and then come up short which i think is why you white's been so agonizing because it's not like you know we get to play off and then we get hammered and it's like oh that's tradition because we're always like right there and then it's like oh shit no we just came up short yeah yeah but you know if anything what we can take away um if not you know a whole lot of momentum of massive wins is cl clutch players winning clutch moments yeah. And, you know, defending, you know, I mean, if you look at our, our win, South Africa beating Bangladesh by four runs, beating Nepal by one run, beating Netherlands by four wickets, six, seven balls remaining, beating Sri Lanka, you know, our most convincing was a six wicket win, 20, mm -hmm. 24 balls remaining. And I mean, we we're chasing 77. So uh, <laughs> it's not, you know, that, that in itself was a bit shaky. So the, maybe shakiness is just our game. 
right? Yeah. We, we, we're going to make a deal of it. And I think the massive one is England. I'm really, I think, I mean, Nicholas Puran ran himself out, unfortunately, last night in 98. But the West Indies are looking unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I mean, they clapped us 3-0 in, in the series before us, before this World Cup. And I think they're, they're looking phenomenal, which is also just amazing. I love having the West Indies back, right? Mm. They're, they're beautiful to watch and just amazing, particularly in the T20 format. They, they just come out so so well. So I think that's going to be a really tough one, particularly away. So largely it's going to come down. You'd expect us to win the USA game and then that England one's going to be massive because it's actually hard to really tell where this English team is at because of so many um, Randall fixtures. Yeah, no, I think, I think that, uh, yeah, that's the big thing. You know, the England, you know, you know they've got the players, you know, on paper, you know, the best as a, as a, could be a world beater, mm-hmm. Harry Brook, for example. I mean, they're, they're defending champions for a reason. Yeah, no, exactly. They're, they've got the quality. Um, whether, they'll, they'll, whether they can put it together when it counts, we'll find out in the next few weeks. Same as the West Indies, you know, it's all very well looking this good. But again, it's, it comes, and this is the nice thing, about, especially T20 cricket. T20 cricket is a very big level, I feel. You know, Heinrich Klaassen goes out on, you know, against England on Saturday or Friday, whenever it is. And goes and scores 100, a hundred, for example, day, yeah. in like twenty balls. You guys are thinking, cool, well, no match that. It, it is, and we've got the players who can do that. And both teams got the players that can do that. But the big thing with cricket is that it can be a day or it can be not. You know, mm-hmm. and I, that's why we can get such big upsets because you yeah. know you can you can you can ride a bit of luck, for example, you can get dropped and whatever, whatever. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to. It. I think I think I'm, I'm not. I want to say I'm confident. I'm, I'm kind of very. You kind of come to terms with it, don't you? You kind of go into a pro tiers play game. And you kind of like, we'll watch, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be excited about yeah. it, but we won't be confident, you know. Listen, I'm I'm certainly happy to be on the side of the draw compared to India, Australia, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, because yeah. I think those. I mean, Afghanistan, and and we, this is a great segue into just the ranking system of this tournament and how broken it is, because Afghanistan, um, despite topping the group, you know, come in at at the second seed, um, for this side just. Essentially, to, to break it down, we all went in to, to the tournament with the ranking system. So, so the pro tiers were number one in their, in our group by the, our world rankings. Um, and as a result of that, whether we came first or second in our group, mm. it didn't matter. We were going to seed as the number one pick going into the next stage. And as a result of that, you're having games that shouldn't be, that should be, you know, for between one and two that are now, you know, full gone conclusions before the games even started. And I just think it's a, I, I get it. They're probably trying to, you know, benefit the fans, I guess, for, you know, where they want to plan to be. But if we're being honest, it's just the English fans. I mean, how yeah. many traveling fans are there in, in uh, going to America or Barbados? Yeah. It's the Barney yeah, Army. So, so it's, it's English, the English cricket board making decisions on an entire World Cup ranking system. And now Afghanistan, classic, have to pay for you know they're unbeaten and 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 confidently they, they they've been winning all they get or did they lose to west indies last night i might be wrong with that but alas you you have a system that doesn't reward the best player in its group you reward a previous ranking which is complete nonsense because look at new zealand you know probably yeah. you know a big upset and and they're out of the world cup and it's just, you're adding more complexity into a complex sport and a tournament with n- new systems already. It just, it just bring it back to the basics, is what I say. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, go back to the to the to the to the, to the easy. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it just ruins everything, doesn't it? You know, it, it, it you know, there's no incentive in, ha- in having the, the, the greatest you know, group stage ever and, and we're going through those games and stuff like that and being able to sort of see exactly who you're going to play. So I think it's just, mm. it is very frustrating from that regard um, and, and I think it's just overcomplicated. I think keep it simple. Even this whole group stage, Super A, semi-final, quarter-final and you're just like, how many different stages of a late tournament do we have to have here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like... <laughs> just, you, just, you, yeah, just make a quarter-finals from here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or knockouts at least. You know, add the jeopardy. Like that's what you want, Right. That yeah. you want it, you want people's knees to be shaking. Now, now we're going to see in the next World Cup. We're going to it's going to be like the I mean the, the IPL. It's going to be like flipping eliminator one, which is you know one versus two. But if they lose, <laughs> then two will take we on four for another chance in the final. It's just it's getting so ridiculous. Just keep it I mean, simple. In what world can you make it out of your group but still lose another game and then go on to win the and World Cup? And still go on to win the World Cup. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like it's it's a bit ludicrous. So. I mean, and and I, it's got to be like, who else is it benefiting other than English fans? Honestly, yeah, well, it's, we all know they're, they're preaching for fans. But I mean, I'm very excited. Obviously, um, tomorrow we've got we've got um, USA 
a massive one. Um, and big news, obviously, all the rest of the games will be in the West Indies, which have been largely, um, you know, the, the highest scoring games, you know, being mm. that they actually have cricket grounds that are, um, you know, used to having cricket playing played on them. Um, Friday, we have England, and then it will be Monday, um, West Indies. Hopefully, by the time that West Indies games comes, we've done enough to um, get ourselves into the next round. Um and you know this this multi-stage tournament yeah right so dan on that note uh because there's some euros you've got to get to should we do our predictions for the week let's get to it cv and, and see what's happening right so we've got the three games which is bulls versus glasgow uh netherlands versus france in the euros and then Proteus versus england um we're gonna start with bulls versus glasgow dan do you have a score in mind i do all right are you ready I feel like we're getting married here um, yeah. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Okay, I know I'm ready. Counter sense, Stevie. Okay, three, two, one. Bulls, Bulls by eight. eight. Oh! You could, of course, you know, I even try to go with the number that you have that you don't throw around often enough you, because you, you know, always get this. I, I, I'll move unless you want to. Well, what, what are move. you moving to? I'll go to. I'll go to. Um, I'll go to seven. Okay. Well, I was going to. I was going to. I'm willing to move to Bulls. You're going to go nine. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, eight and a half yeah. actually. Um, yeah. uh, okay, tight, tight as always. We've had we've had a lot of we've had a lot of similar predictions recently. So yeah, um, let's move into the next one. Stevie Netherlands versus France, both picking up wins um, by one goal in their opening games. Essentially, this would determine um, who ranks first in the group and who ranks second. Um, France without their captain. Um, mm. The broken nose killer Mbappe. Stevie, do you have a scoreline in mind? I do. I do. It's going to be ballsy, but I do. Wow. Okay. I'm also. I'm also ready when you are. You can't just okay. say. Three, two, one, two, one. Two, Netherlands. Two. Ooh, I was going to go with one, one originally, and then I changed. Desmond. Let me just let me just throw in some ne- Netherlands upset there for shits and giggles. Okay, so you got Netherlands. I've got uh, the old uh, Desmond two two. So we'll see how that ends out. Yeah, well, it's going to be a France, got... you know, one nil victory. We know this now. Um... <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I'll go put money a thousand bucks on that one if you want to. Yeah, correct. Um, um, right, and the big one, which is versus England. South Africa versus England on Friday at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground in Solusia. Um This is so where the have, last... let, let, Let's start off. Um, should we start off with runs? Yeah. I mean, you'd be daft not to go for one, right? Can you go for a half? <laughs> yeah. Super over. Okay. Yeah, super super uh, over there it is, yeah. Yeah. It's like penalties. Okay, no, I, I, I'm ready when you are, Stevie. Okay. Three, Runs first. two, one. Eight. Eight. by 10. I was going to go 10. You're 10. 8, 10. Nice and close. Okay. Yeah, wickets, 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 wickets. Yeah, Three, no, just... two, one. Protein three. by three. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, okay. Go, you I'm, move now because I moved I'm the last to go one. To. I'm going to go to two. Ooh, spicy. That's going to be a close game. Uh, I, I'm happy with that because that means any, anything above that, the Protein's win. And if they if they lose by eight or nine wickets, I don't even care that I lose this because, yeah. yes, that would have been it's a great play. play. Yeah, no, if we go out and actually draw them, we'll be like, sweet. <laughs> happy, happy to forego this for an actual Protein's win. Um, okay, as right. shocking as that might sound. Uh, Stevie, well, geez, what Dan, a good pod, good pod. I'm good ho- pod, so yeah. happy to be back. I, I, I'm, and I hope this was a performance, um, you know, for the ages preseason before we get into the next one. Um, you know, I love Ali. What a mate! Thank you for stepping in um, as I was having, you know, connection issues out there in Sicily. Um, worst things could happen, but uh, hopefully this display yeah, put on it. And if basically, not, you know, the connection issues were basically, you know, Dan was in the pub and just starting beers. I was like, you know what? Steve, my internet's really bad. Um, so sorry, you can't. Yeah, no, uh, a lot of Aperols on the beach. Maybe there we go. Pub is for the UK. But um, if you are watching the Boca game or at the Boca game this weekend, come say hello. I shall be there. Um, or you'll see me on the TV. And if you want to put something in the comments, I'll be um, in the presser room. So if you'd like me to ask Kocha Smith something in Afrikaans, just you know, put it in the comments below and, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to get, get something over there. Well, there we go. Um, I'll pay. I'll pay good money to see that. 
Uh, well, Dan, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy it. Uh, you know, obviously, we'll be covering all these various games. A blockbuster weekend of coverage for Unfair Sports. You've got Motorsport Sport this weekend. It's F1. We've got cricket. We've got uh, football. We've got rugby. So make sure that you check out all the various channels. Follow us on the socials. We are on the socials between two fans on Instagram as well as TikTok. You can listen to us on all your favorite audio streaming services as well. So make sure you go and check us out on all the various ones. We'll have some clips and stuff like that over the next few days. And then next week, we've got a very cool segment which we will be announcing, which is basically to be like the craziest news story of the week and basically what's going to happen is myself and Dan are each going to bring a story on us from our side tell each each other and then you guys are going to decide which is the craziest story of the week and uh, there's been some very cool ones so unfortunately we don't have time to do that today but we will be bringing that in next week so make sure you tune in for that as well Dan always a pleasure keep well always a pleasure Stevie uh, let's go switch on and watch CR7 uh, win the Euro eh? correct correct and then truly become <laughs> the, the GOAT Amazing, Steve. Cool. Thanks to everybody else, and we'll see you guys soon. Cheers, everyone.